Welcome back, everyone, to the next installment in my Emacs for Writers video series. In this video, we've got a big one. I will be introducing you to org mode. What is it? What does it do? In this video, you will get your first glimpse at how org mode can completely transform how you write, how you think, maybe, too. So stay tuned. We're about to get into it. Before we begin, I will mention that this educational video series is based on my Emacs for Writers handbook. If you want to follow along with the text, there will be a link down below where you can download the DRM free ebook. So thank you. On with the video. Some key concepts that we will be discussing. Org mode as an integrated productivity suite. And what that means. Hierarchical outlining with asterisks. Markup syntax for formatting the export dispatcher and back ends, tag system for organization. And what does any of this mean, particularly for writers? As I said, org mode is a complete productivity suite in Emacs. It allows you to track to-do list items uh, through various files, schedule calendar events and set deadlines, and create your own custom agenda view right in your text buffer. We'll get into some of the agenda features later, I also have a few videos covering various agenda use cases on my YouTube channel here. For now, as writers, we're just going to focus on org mode as a tool to compose, organize, format, and export your writing uh, to formats that will be accepted in the writer's marketplace. So in writer's circles, or even in individual writers, there is um, a certain push and pull between planning and pantsing, as they call it. Do you outline what you want to write beforehand, or do you just start writing and figure it out uh, by the seat of your pants, as they say? Org mode lets you do both in the same program and the same file. You can accomplish this with headings. This is one of the things that uh, really makes org mode magical. So I'm going to go into a, a text document here. Uh, I believe I created a test folder. Let's create a new file called uh, file.org. So of course, any file that you complete with a .org extension will automatically load up org mode. Org mode is a default package, uh, or I should say it's, it's pre-installed with Emacs, so you don't have to do anything to get it. It's already there. And of course, org mode files have a title, so we'll just call this text document. And let's start creating some headings. We use asterisks for this. I'll just do an intro, uh, first section, and second section. And while I'm here, let's grab some some writing to actually put in these sections, just so we have something to to play with, something to look at here. And once again, I'll turn on visual line mode so these paragraphs wrap nicely. So now these headings are not just formatting indicators. Like you're not just saying, like in this document, I want a, a level two heading here, and that's just a different font and size than the others. It's, it's more than that. Uh, they're like nodes of information. That's the way you want to start thinking of them, not just for formatting, but for organizing your document, organizing the information that you're trying to share in this document. So these nodes can be used to outline your ideas, basically, and they can be folded to sort of hide and display different elements of your document using the tab key. And if you hold down the, the meta key and your up and down arrows, you can actually um, reorganize headings in space like that in the, their in their order, and you can also promote and uh, demote things. So if you if you hold down the meta key and I shift um, right and left with the arrow keys, I just turn this level one heading with one asterisk into a, uh, a level two. So now that heading beneath this one belongs as like a child node of this one. So again, you're starting to get into the idea of organizing information rather than just formatting. And uh, you can also actually assign completion status to these. So if I shift right, it puts it in a to-do state. And then shift right again, it goes to a done state. 
And this is also helpful if you are working on different sections of a document and you want to mark one as to do and as done, and you can actually customize those states. So that's part of, um, uh, there's a lot to do with that as well, but we can get into, but basically you can have customizable states of uh, states of something that you want to do and states that are done. So these headings can also be used to interact with other files. So if you rather move this heading to another file, you can actually refile it somewhere else. So this is a, it's a very powerful. So you should get a grasp on this early that these are more than just text headings, though they can be used in that way. They are actually discrete nodes of information, almost like uh, nested files in themselves in some ways. And uh, so whether you are planning or pantsing, you will want to familiarize yourself with the different uh, formatting options that you have available in org mode. So for comparison, I'll open up a regular word processor, uh, LibreOffice Writer. All right, so I've got LibreOffice here, so we can do a little bit of a comparison. Now these two different, two different programs work. So if you're coming to Emacs from the world of word processors, you're probably used to formatting your documents by highlighting a word or phrase and then selecting a... Uh, a type of formatting from your menu. So if I wanted to, to italicize a rugged countenance, I can click the I and I can italicize it. So org mode formatting is different, of course. Because we're in a plain text file, we'll use a markup instead to indicate what kind of formatting we want to apply. So this is more like coding in that we're marking up our text with special characters that will later be interpreted by the org mode exporter to do what we want. This will give you a lot more flexibility over the project, especially if you have to export the same document with different formatting requirements to different places as writers often have to do. This is actually one of the major factors that attracted me to uh, Emacs and org mode many years ago when I started sending out my science fiction stories to various publications. I saw pretty quickly that different publishers often had different requirements for manuscripts that they accept. It wasn't all just the standard manuscript format. Uh, some people wanted them uh, with line breaks between paragraphs. Some people wanted no indenting. Some people wanted normal indenting. Uh, so, so there were a lot of different specifications. So instead of uh, reformatting and saving multiple different versions of the same document and you know and perhaps accidentally introducing typos and all kinds of problems, you can just have one master document and export it to different formats with different specifications you know, much more easily. And uh, org mode lets you do that. And it's really not that difficult, I must say. So formatting marks are pretty simple and we'll definitely cover them in more detail in the next video. But basically uh, you would indicate italics, for example, with uh, forward slashes. So to do the rugged countenance like I did before, I'll just put forward slashes um, around that phrase. And so that will italicize it. I can also do bold with asterisks. So make that bold and you actually can do um, underscores as well to underline something so uh, don't worry we will definitely return to all of this in the series for now i just want to show you the uh, the basics of the formatting and uh, we're going to do some tags and i'll show you the export dispatcher as well so tags are another way of organizing your document so they're more useful in the context of uh, when you're using org mode for productivity and tracking projects and to-do items, but they can be helpful for writing as well. So one way I always use tags for writing is uh, with the no export and ignore tags. So no export is helpful. So if I wanted to take this um, introductory section here and decide I don't want to include this, uh, but I might want to save it for later or have it for reference, I can do control C, control Q to prompt me for a tag, and I can write no export. So now when I export this document, this whole uh, section here will just be completely uh, excluded from the export. So it'll basically start here at no doubt in this first section. The other valuable one is the ignore tag. You need to install a few extra packages to get this one, but I will show you how to do that. I actually have a, a whole video about it, um, which I can uh, I can link to. But basically, I'm going to put a tag of ignore on this uh, section here. And what this does is it keeps the text of this section in the export, but it will ignore the heading. So you won't see the words first section or that uh, heading in the exported document. It'll just start again 
at no doubt beginning of the, the document. So that's also really helpful if you are writing a complicated document and you want to keep your heading structure for organization and outlining purposes, but you don't want to actually export those headings. In a normal editor, you, if you wanted to do that, you'd have to go through and erase all of your headings, and then you've lost all your organization. Um, in org mode, you don't have to do that. You can just mark something as ignore, and it'll just export your paragraphs without the headings. Incredibly helpful. Saves you a lot of time and aggravation. All right, the final thing I wanted to show you in this video is the export dispatcher. Now, we'll be talking much more about export strategies and systems later, but I just wanted to show you what we have to give you an idea so you can start playing with it. So once you've completed your composition and your editing, you can open up the export dispatcher with control C, control E. So you'll see here you have a bunch of export options built in, including open office, which is what I showed you before, which can uh, you can use to reformat your documents for Microsoft Word and other things like that. Uh, HTML, if you want to export for the web as well, uh, you can do LaTeX to create PDFs. You can even just export to plain ASCII text if you want to. Now, there may be uh, formats here that you will never use, and we can remove those, and we can even create our own, which is what we're going to learn about later. Uh, so that's it for this video. I'm going to leave it there. There's a lot to talk about with org mode, but I don't want to overwhelm you too fast. We're definitely going to get into it and do more advanced things as time goes on. Uh, so for now, I'm going to leave the video there. Be sure to leave me any comments or questions that you may have. I'll do my best to answer them. And of course, uh, share the video. If you got value out of it. Like and subscribe and all that if you enjoyed it. If you want to see more, and I'll see you all in the next one.